Peter Buswell for Dr. VOIP with a tech tip on troubleshooting caller ID on Shortel systems. We're going to take a quick look at two solutions for debugging caller ID. The first solution will be using the Shortel uh, trunk test tool. Second solution will actually telnet into a switch. So from the Shortel server, you have to be on the server, you're going to start programs, Shortel, and you're going to click on the trunk test tool. That will pop up this little puppy here. It uh, sometimes takes a minute or two to populate, but I've gone ahead and um, brought it up already. Uh, this will show you the different trunks connected to your system. In the case of a PRI here, we can see a 23-channel PRI connected. I've got some SIP trunks and uh, analog lines here, but we're going to focus exclusively on the PRI. I'm going to place an incoming phone call to my extension here, and uh, we're going to see, um, hopefully, th <coughs> the incoming caller ID. So you can see that this phone number is calling this extension. A uh, very easy way to check the caller ID. Now, having said that, Sometimes the phone company is not going to accept that. You're going to be in some kind of shootout with the phone company on caller ID, and you're going to have to do something a little different. So what we're going to do from the Shortel server is we're going to open up a command prompt and get ourselves into the proper uh, directory to turn uh, off the uh, Telnet security shell. So C, uh, change directory to program files, shore tell, uh, shore where server. And this will put you in a program file, shore tell communications, <coughs> shore where server subdirectory. At that point, we're going to use the IPBX CTL command. So it's IPBX CTL minus telnet on uh, IP address of the Shortel switch that uh, um, we want to get into. In this case, uh, um, I believe it's this one. It's going to prompt me for the password. Now, this is not the password for the switch. This is the password for the security sh shell. And if you don't know where to change that, I've done another video that shows you where that is in the portal, in the shortware director portal. So at this point, you can see that the Telnet <coughs> access has been enabled. We're going to, at this time, go ahead and telnet into the uh, switch. So the command is uh, telnet IP address. And at this point, the login request is for the password and username to the switch. The standard um, Anonymous is the login password, uh, uh, the, the username. The password is if you don't know it, uh, you shouldn't be in here. So let's try that again. Uh, anonymous. Okay, when you first come into the switch, it's going to bring you into a menu-driven system uh, for configuring the switch. Um, it's kind of the baby interface. What we want to do is get down to VMX works. So we're going to generate the command go to shell. Go to shell will now put us um, at the VMX uh, operating kernel level inside the switch. At this point, what I'm going to want to do is turn on some traces. Uh, PRI underscore trace equals uh, 10. And as soon as we do this, you're going to start seeing uh, diagnostic messages coming from the switch. I'm going to do a PRI underscore log equals 10. And the most important command for purposes of um, debugging the uh, caller ID on 
a, a short tail PRI is the MPM underscore D bug underscore mask equals uh, um, minus one. And at that point, uh, um, we're ready to capture. So what you're going to want to do here is capture uh, an incoming phone call. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my cell phone here to uh, show you what this debug looks like uh, as, as uh, a call comes in and where the caller ID is. Now it's going to go by so fast on your screen. There it is. There's my incoming call. Um, hopefully you had your capture on and you, you captured that call. So um, at this point, I'm going to um, turn off the log PRI uh, trace equals zero PR, um, PRI um, underscore log equals zero. And at that point, um, PRI. so uh, we've turned off our logs and uh, what what I normally like to do is either use hyperterminal or terraterminal or something to capture these um, logs. Uh, that, that get get the screen capture here now. We go in here and we can mark this and you know go and collect this stuff. Uh, we can do a, um, edit, uh, select all, uh, edit, copy, and then basically uh, what I might do at this point is open up a, a notepad and go ahead and uh, paste that into my notepad so that we could take a look at it. So once we have uh, successfully captured the D-channel messages, the trace information from the PRI from inside the switch, we shouldn't have any arguments with the phone company about what we're seeing because this is an actual D-channel message. Uh, again, the uh, debug command that we used uh, was this NPM debug mask. And you can see the actual uh, D-channel messages um, that are appearing on this PRI. Uh, this happened to be the PRI number this is the actual uh, DID number that was dialed. Uh, you can see that we've already captured the incoming uh, name. So we were capturing name and number. We notice here that the number of digits that uh, we captured was three and that the actual digits was in effect 115. The DID number that was dialed um, is displayed. So you get a lot of um, useful information about the call setup and the call tear, tear down in addition to the various um, information that uh, is captured with respect to the calling name and number. We can see the SIP messages uh, inviting uh, in short, tell the call setup between uh, switches and uh, is, is a SIP invite. Um, so very useful, powerful tool for seeing what's going on the D channel of the PRI and helping us prove out the caller ID, obviously. Uh, we have seen the number that we expected to see. We, we did capture the, the caller ID, which I have changed before I did this, so I don't have a bunch of internet wackos calling me. But um, caller ID, eventually we can even see the uh, um, disposition of the call, the reason. Uh, the call being offered, and ultimately we will um, see the call uh, established. We will see the call um, off-hook messages. And what I'm looking for here is the reason for the normal um, disconnect message. So 
the entire telephone call setup, transfer of caller ID information, the call takedown is all captured. Uh, and this is why the PRI trace utility is so very, very powerful for troubleshooting a wide uh, variety of um, PRI related calls. So I hope you have found this uh, interesting. And this is Peter for Dr. Voip. I thank you for viewing.